Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com. Uh, two or three weeks ago, I started in on the Ballerina Bunny, and it's been going really slow. I, I, I keep using as my excuse the fact that I'm kind of tearing my my house apart and putting it back together again. Huge project, lots of sawdust, lots of plaster dust, so um, this is not my highest priority right at the moment. But I, I do think I need a, a break right at the moment, and I thought this would be a really fun thing to do, kind of get myself away from the sawdust for a minute. Um, I'm going to start putting the paper mache clay on the rabbit. Um, she's a ballerina, and she's going to have a tutu. So what I would like to do is put the paper mache clay on the bottom half, then I'll put on her tutu tomorrow after the clay has uh, gotten a little bit solid. I'll do that with plaster cloth. And after that, I'll be able to position her arms and finish up. Um, I did buy some, oops, there they are, some eyeballs <laughs> at the hardware store. Um, they're called buttons. Um, I don't know what they're really for, but I'm going to use them for eyes. But, I, but since I'm not going to get this high up today, I won't be doing that today. I'll, I'll wait until the next video. So I'm going to use some more of this um, cloth that you get at the hardware store. Um, again, it's right next to the, um, the, the joint compound. That's what it's for, actually, um, when, when you're using it for um, the purpose for which it was actually designed. Um, it's, it's used when, when people um, put their walls together. And what I'm doing now is just putting it over her feet. It's got a little bit of adhesive on the back, not very much, but just enough to kind of hold it for a minute. The new clay will stick very nicely to the uh, dried clay, but this will help reinforce it, I think, so that, so that it'll become one uh, solid piece and be just a little bit less likely uh, to break if somebody happens to pick the piece up by the top. So I'm just going to put a very thin layer of the paper mache clay over the legs. Um, I don't like to use any more than, oh, say a quarter of an inch. Um, because if you use a really thick layer, it takes forever to dry. I'm just trying to make the tail nice and fluffy. Still not quite sure how I'm going to get the tutu on over this tail. Most ballerinas don't have a tail. <laughs> it's not usually a problem, but um, I think it'll work. I'm just doing this kind of like frosting on a cake. Okay, so several days ago I uh, put the clay on the bottom portion of the rabbit um, and I wanted to let it dry enough so that I could work on the tutu without uh, destroying it. Now what I'm going to do is um, use some plaster cloth pieces to make a tutu, and I don't want it. I don't want the plaster cloth to actually stick to um, the the legs. I want it to flare out a little bit. So I'm going to use some uh, aluminum foil. I'm going to go ahead and um, put that on now. I'm just taping this aluminum foil up here to the top of, of um, where the skirt area goes. I drew a, a waistline on there. You know rabbits don't have a waist, <laughs> I gave her one anyway. Um, the plaster cloth won't stick to the aluminum foil. That's why I'm using it. And I'll just pull it out as soon as the plaster cloth is uh, cured. Okay, I think that should do it. Um, now the next thing I'm doing here is I'm using some medical grade plaster cloth. Um, you can use hobby store plaster cloth for this sort of thing if you want, but this is so much more fun to use. Um, this one I'm going to use today. I happen to have some on hand. And I cut it into pieces, I don't know, about 12 inches long, and I'm going to double them, I think, um, because this is going to be bronze, or at least given a fake bronze um, coating. And I, I need it to be strong enough, so I think two is probably going to be needed. I'm just going to dip these in a great big uh, bucket of water. You can't see me doing that, of course, because it's way far away from the camera. And now let's see if this is going to work.
I think you can kind of see why I didn't want to um, make these arms stiff with the paper mache clay. I needed them to be able to move around a little bit. Now after the uh, first layer was cured, I decided I needed one more layer at least uh, just to make it look more like a tutu than just a plain old skirt. As you can see, I'm, I made sure that um, I didn't smooth it all for too much, which would have covered up the cloth and all the little, little spaces because the um, original tutu on the Degas sculpture that I'm trying to copy uh, is sort of gauzy, and this is gauzy too, even though it's going to be bronzed. So I, I think that's going to work. Well, that's about all I have time for today. Um, I've got to get back to my remodeling job, and the thing I'm actually going to be doing today is finishing the trim around the new paper mache floor. So I might tell you about that in another video too. Um, I did want to mention though before I go, um, that you probably noticed that the paper mache clay I was using um, on the legs was stiffer than you would normally see if you've used the, um, the formula before. You can find the uh, recipe out on my blog at ultimatepapermache.com. There's a link to it on every page. Um, it was stiffer and I, I realized um, when I was using it, it was because I used the same joint compound that I bought for my remodeling and it just happened to be DAP formula. I didn't notice the, the uh, brand when I bought it. I've been telling people not to use DAP because back in Oregon when I used it, uh, it would actually turn the paper mache clay into a ball of rubber. Now this seems to be a little bit different, so they may have different formulas in different parts of the country. I'm in South Dakota now. Um, but it was stiffer and to the point where I had to use um, a, a damp knife to spread it. And it also stiffened up a lot faster on the piece in a way that I wasn't really happy with. So I can, would say if you have some uh, DAP joint compound around and you're concerned about whether or not it will work in your paper mache clay recipe or not, go ahead and test it. Put a little bit, a little dab of the joint compound and a little dab of Elmer's glue together and mix it around. And if it turns into uh, a ball of rubber, you can't use it. <laughs> if it just stiffens up a little bit, then you can use it, but don't don't make a full recipe because it might um, it might get too stiff over time for you to use it at all. Okay, so um, next in the next video, I'll give her some eyeballs. Um, I'll do those ears. Um, we'll get a little bit more detailing, and um, and now I'm off back to work. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Come visit us, ultimatepapermache.com. Bye-bye.